Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Got a couple of quick things to talk about before I jump into this cast, and hopefully you can bear with me and listen up. Just got a couple of things that's going on in my life. And if you don't want to listen to me ramble, skip to probably three minutes or so, and you can be over and done with that and jump straight to the cast. As a lot of you know, I've been kind of trying to ramp up the quality on what I'm doing with these videos and I'm pretty confident that I've got a good handle on casting in general. I've got my audio quality about where I want it and all of the features that I wanted in the video there and I'm sitting at a really good spot and I like where it's headed. Uh, in a month, for those of you who don't know, I am going to be getting married um, and for that I'll be probably taking a two week break from YouTube. I'm going to try to get a backlog of casts up so that I can feed you guys some videos over the interim and you won't actually have a break in content, there just won't be any live casts for two weeks. Um, but after I come back from that, I'm going to be setting up to move into an actual house, which is going to be awesome because I'll have a room that I can designate my casting room and not have to do it in the living room anymore. A um, couple of things that I wanted to add with that, I would really like to get sound damping for the walls and add a few things here and there that just small pieces of equipment like a suspension arm for my microphone so that when I bump the desk it doesn't make noise and you know just the little things that help clean things up and for that reason some of you are already supporting my patreon page and I think that is phenomenal and I am eternally grateful to every single person who has pledged on that um, right now it's sitting at about $44 which is right almost to the $50 goal that I set. 50 bucks is what I spend for upgraded internet so that I can have the bandwidth to push um, 720p casts, uh, soon to be 1080p, because when I move I'll have access to a better internet connection for about the same price, um, as, as far as live streaming goes. And then also the Adobe Suite, which allows me to do the mini cam and the flashbacks and all that kind of stuff, layering the videos together and all that. So. 50 bucks a month covers my cost for casting, and I'm going to add a couple of more goals in there. If they aren't added at the time that this video releases, they will be in within the next 24 hours. Um, it's just a couple of things that I want to add. Little items to bump up the quality that I kind of don't have the free cash to spend for, but if you guys want to support the channel and you want to see, excuse me, you want to see these things come to be, if you can help me out, that would be phenomenal. Now, one other thing that I want to say about that, I really want to start pushing more content on this channel from a wide variety of sources. That is why I've settled on three Supreme Commander casts a week. The training cast, the game cast, and then a live cast. And that is going to be what I do for Supreme Commander from here to the foreseeable future. I want to add Heroes of the Storm gameplay and then I also want to add, when it comes out, Ashes of the Singularity. That's going to be three strategy games, two of them epic scale, one of them like a League of Legends type deal. And one of the reasons I want to add Heroes of the Storm is because I actually have an opportunity with a conglomeration channel to post Heroes of the Storm videos where well over 100,000 people are going to be able to see them. So that's going to bring some traffic back to FA2. Um, but I just want to expand and branch out into different areas of the channel, and I want to turn this into something that I do as a means of at least partial support, and I want to grow tremendously in this. I think that I am putting out a high enough content, high enough quality content, that I can ask for this kind of thing and that I can push towards this goal. So all of the people who have helped me out over the last six to eight months, I honestly can't remember how long I've been doing it, um, and all the people who have supported me through that and the suggestions and even monetary assistance at a couple of points that you guys have provided, it's just been awesome. And I would like to ask for your support moving forward, branching out into new areas, bringing you new games, more content. It will be epic as long as I can maintain this. So. That is what I wanted to say about this and the channel, the direction I'm headed, and again, I'm going to get a backlog of casts up so that when I get married, I don't... No offense to Guile. I, I do not mean to put down Guile in any way because when you're married, you know, your priorities shift a little bit and he had a whole lot going on with purchasing a house and all this other kind of stuff that was going on, but I do not plan to take a six-month hiatus. I will have videos ready for two weeks, I will be gone for two weeks, and then I will be back 
either at the two week mark or very very shortly after that um, so got all of that lined up all right so that is that I'm gonna leave it be not gonna say anything else about it and let us go ahead and dive into the cast that took just a little bit longer than I thought it would this cast is gonna be on the ditch it is a one versus one um, this map is huge it is deceptively large and I have issues when I play this map with expansion now this game I have to forewarn you is not necessarily the most even game uh, it does end uh, I'm not gonna give you the time for it cuz I, I wanna keep that for the end how he actually dies but this game is a stellar example of aggressive play controlling the map controlling the order of events and doing everything in your power to keep your opponent off balance you do not let him recover you do not let him get the upper hand you just pound him into the ground continually all game and use that as a domination tactic to kill him in the end and i i have rarely seen a game that is executed this well now i'm not going to say it's a perfect game but i think this is going to be a really good example for you guys just to cast this game and see how it goes on so our two players are the egg roll who has taken cybern and on the other side we have electrician this is an 1164 ladder rank and a 1358 relatively close to each other and one of the things you got to remember about the ditch is that there is a tremendous amount of reclaim. The amount of rocks on this map is pretty ludicrous, and I, well, we'll look at the reclaim ticker when uh, a little bit later in the game. You can see we've already got an engineer out here snatching up rocks. You're going to need to overbuild power to a great degree. You're going to get mass extractor upgrades pretty early on so that you can roll over that eco. And then you're going to want to tech up as rapidly as you possibly can because there's so much mass coming in and so many mass extractors that you can potentially control that the game is just going to escalate very quickly. So it looks like we've got second air going down for electrician and right off the bat I can see, ah there he goes, he is laying down some more power there. He's got one air factory coming up. It looks like the egg roll has actually laid out a grid for two air factories and he's building power like a madman he's got one engineer and his ACU on it although his ACU just swapped out decided he wanted that air factory a little bit earlier than he initially planned on and he's gonna have the two air factories there and then we've got engineers spreading out every which way grabbing the hydro getting that power online and four more air factories with adjacency on the hydro and snatching up mexes looks like we've got one headed here for an expansion we've got a land factory down there and land factories over here the more you can distribute your build power the better off you are because when you lose a factory in a certain area of the map if you don't have any more engineers over there it takes you that much longer to expand again so at, on the flip side of that when you're when you're being aggressive you're going to want to uh, bomb engineers and factories out that are in places that are very far away from the main base so that you can delay your opponent's expansion and you're gonna have to excuse me today I I have a little bit of a sore throat it's hitching a little bit I may start squeaking and popping halfway through this cast but I think I have enough voice to make through it just bear with me if it starts getting a little bit scratchy because I don't actually feel under the weather I just don't have vocal strength if that makes any sense um, Got a T1 bomber coming out for the electrician. Nice little bit of early aggression. Um, still laying down those power generators there. It looks like he is on a patrol order. Patrol orders can be used for reclaim. They're not quite as efficient as an attack move order. Um, got a jester too. We're going to have to watch that. The attack move order forces engineers to run in a relatively straight line, reclaiming things as they go, whereas a patrol order kind of more of a loop the loop thing um, your engineer spreads out a lot more maybe is not quite as efficient in its movements instead of a patrol order you would you know place a uh, ah, you would place a um, attack move order one two three four and the engineer would travel in a circle for the rocks and reclaim them where they actually are 
So over here on this side, this gesture is going to be headed straight for the expanding area, and you can see he's got a move order placed, likely suspect here, loop around the mass extractors, and then back across. That way he can forget about that gesture, and hopefully it will snag any engineers that it comes across. On the northern side, bomber coming in. Looks like it did not drop at all, which is a terrible shame. There were four engineers and a bunch here. I didn't see a bomb, and I don't see any... Well, no. Is that... That may be trees. I think that's trees. So that bomber was pretty much a total waste. Egg roll pulling in 15 mass per tick. Not quite as much as the electrician, but... The egg rolls engineers, the expansion engineers, are farther out, it looks like to me. We've already got a factory about to go down here, whereas this engineer is still laying down mexes. No factory in the works there. Overall, I would say that egg rolls expansion is a bit more solid than the electrician's is. As Jester's finishing up its little roundabout trek through this base, I would have sent an air scout with that thing. We've got a second and a third and a fourth jester. As, and it uh, looks like the electrician has gone a little bit harder on the interceptors. He does have a drop headed over to the right. That is going to drop way up here out of sight. Hopefully he will throw down some land factories and get a forward base going that can stream units down this way to the egg roll. Now, you can see he's got a T2 mass extractor coming right there. And all of his other ones are staying T1. Let's check in on the reclaim number. 6,400 reclaim for him. And he's just barely having enough power. Not anymore. He's having a hard time feeding all of that reclaim. And electrician is also minus and minus. But a little bit better balanced than the egg roll is. Not by much though. And there it goes. Right as I say that, he starts dipping. Let's see. We've got these jesters moving across here going immediately for the engineers as any good jester should there's actually an interceptor numbers advantage for the egg roll despite the fact that he's pushed out uh, six jesters now and it looks like he's continuing to build them we've got seven eight air factories coming looks like four of them are building jesters and we've got interceptors in these two and this one is gestures as well. So he's building a mix out of all of his factories. That anti-air turret there is going to clean up the air for electrician, but all of these mass extractors are going down from this jester fire. If that engineer gets sniped off, there will be major problems on the south side. Electrician continuing to push more mass income. He's gone for heavy mass extractor upgrades. Already got T2 power online, shielding T2 mass extractors, whereas the egg roll is still spamming T1 power. He does have a T2 factory. Which one is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Land factory right there. So he is going to start laying down a T2 power grid, but he's mostly relying on T1 units, and he really hasn't gotten too aggressive with his mass extractor upgrades. He's strictly feeding all of this into this continuous stream of jesters and interceptors that's pushing across. And egg roll or not egg roll, electrician, is not really adjusting his air output too much. He's got a handful of engineers assisting his single air factory, still only one, so he's not benefiting nearly as much from the uh, adjacency like egg roll is. Egg roll is pulling in less power, 1k power, so much reclaim, 12k reclaim, 13k for electrician, but egg roll is having noticeably harder times with his eco balance. Might would have done him a little bit better to push this a little harder before he was so hard into the air production, but he does have T2 gens online now, and that is going to bump him back up into the green. So perfectly balanced eco at the moment, still reclaiming. He is good to go, and this expansion did die just before the factory came online. That engineer was killed, and then jesters are harassing the northern side as well. So this is overall a suppression game for the egg roll, and he's still behind an eco. Electrician has a little bit more, but the gap is closing, and the power gap is definitely gone. Electrician is throwing down additional T2 powers, 
And let's take a check on the northern side. We've got T2 factories online. T2 support, rather. And more factories going down. So this is about to get nasty. Egg roll has no idea that it's up there whatsoever. That is totally concealed from him. And it looks like we've actually got a T3 upgrade as well going on for this land factory. So we're going to get some high-tech units from the northern side here. That may turn into a problem for the egg roll later on. He does have a T3 upgrade of his own going, though. So as long as he can maintain his reclaim numbers and push aggressively, the eco gap is closed now, 47-45. He should be fine. So electrician is fine on mass. He is fine on power, but he is severely lacking in air control. And map control, for that matter. Uh... The egg roll has secured a pretty good portion of the available mass extractors. He's expanding to grab these other ones down here. Looks like Red is trying to... There's some reclaim. That engineer queue, or that uh, mech's queue, rather, is from the blue engineer up there in the corner. We got our first T1 mobile artillery and pillars hitting this group. It's going to pretty easily wipe out this base. There's nothing here to stop it. T2 support factory coming online there, but I doubt that it's going to make it. All there are engineers, and those will die quickly, especially at the hands of the Lobos. So we've got Jester's on the move down here. There was a small engagement from between Electrician and Egg Roll on the southern side, but Electrician really didn't gain any ground. Most of the Jester's are still online. And Eggroll still has Air 1 very hard. He's going to move down to kill off these naval factories. Immediate T2 upgrade there. That is not the brightest. Honestly, I would go for frigates to help out with anti-air immediately and for water control. But there's a T2 factory already online for the Eggroll. So frigates probably wouldn't do a huge amount of good. But that is a waste of mass right there. Half-built T2 factory getting shut down immediately. These interceptors are going to just wail on that group, and that leaves the Jesters free. Kill whatever they want to, and still got Jesters pushing towards the southern side. So many Jesters. Now, air aggression is a spectacular thing, but at this point, I think that the egg roll probably would have been better off pushing for a T2 air factory because the Renegades are much more mass efficient than the Jesters are. They have slightly lower damage output per mass than the Jesters, but they have area of effect. They have longer fuel capacities, so they can fly for longer without having this problem right here, where you have flashing fuel bar and you start losing flight speed. And uh, they have more health per mass. They're a lot more survivable, both as a single unit and mass per mass. So... By this point, by the time you build, I would say, eight or nine Jesters, you would have been better off building a T2 factory and building two or three uh, Renegades, because after that point, you're just far ahead not building Jesters. But, since he does have the Jesters, he is doing a decent job of using them, although right there, I'm going to park him over some mobile flak, which is going to melt the face off of those Jesters. They stand no chance whatsoever falling to the ground there along with some of their interceptor pals the uh the t2 gunships while they still get slaughtered by flak they at least stand a little bit better of a chance seven gu uh, t2 gunships would actually have a pretty good chance of knocking out one flak at a time maybe on two different occasions but honestly flak mass for mass just demolishes gunships no matter what so there's not really a good situation for that. Um, loyalists are out. Egg Roll has gone for Loyalists as opposed to Bricks. And that is mostly, I would think, because of the speed. I can't speak for him. I am not him as a player. But if I were him, I would be building Loyalists because of the speed. They can respond to these outlying areas much quicker. They're very good for map control. And that's going to allow him to fairly easily defeat these T2 units that are coming out pillars that are streaming in one by one loyalists are going to mop that up without much problem and there they are renegades the t2 gunship the only t2 gunship with area of effect 
very nice tool for Cybrans to use makes them brutally effective against packed engineer swarms. So the T3HQ is online over here. That means we will have Percivals at some point on this side of the map. Looks like we got two support factories going to T3. We'll see those in just a moment, I would think. The egg roll is ahead of the electrician in score at this point. Let's take a check in here. He's slightly behind an eco still, but he has reclaimed 8,000 more mass than the electrician has. And the electrician is trying to drop these outlying bases and get some units online, but the harassment is real with this game. We've got Wagners moving across the water to just come across and kill off any mass extractors they can. Electricians building Janus's, but uh, yeah, excellent aiming, Mr. Janus. That is uh, definitely pro-level bombing right there. The targeting is so messed up on UEF T2 bombers. Something desperately needs to be done about that. It is not even close to where it's supposed to be. That one kinda sorta, but yeah, you can see how bad that is. That's why people are always joking about how bad Janus's are for sniping, because basically you just stand still with your ACU and about half the time the bombers don't even hit you. That might be a slight exaggeration, but you get my drift. Alright, we got a pack of four loyalists now. Four kills, 15 kills, and three kills. I'm gonna rack those things up. Moving easily through these T2 and T1 units. Not gonna be any serious issues. Until these two factories come online. Uh, come on, voice, hold together. It's getting a little bit hard to talk here. Um. I lost my train of thought. There we go. Alright, so this now belongs to the electrician. He is going to start pushing engineers out. Those are going to reclaim, build mass extractors, start sucking up some of that mass. It's going to make up some of the gap between him and the egg roll. He does have a 30 mass output advantage. Is that resource allocation? That is what I want to know. No, it is not. It is strictly with mass extractors, probably with that group up there. Most of those are T2s already, or one of them is, two of them, there we go. And the Wagners are still, still patrolling the back end here. Once that thing finally stood still, the Januses were able to hit it. Apparently, if you keep moving around, they just can't. And Wagner versus Walls. Walls are not working, but... Point defense was more than strong enough to kill the Wagner anyway. Look at that beautiful night sky. Can you imagine if our sky was green? That would be kind of epic, actually. Of course, if it was green, we wouldn't know any difference because green would be normal and I would be sitting here speculating, well, wouldn't it be cool if the sky was blue and basically repeating the same line? Maybe that's happening in an alternate dimension. I don't know. And Loyalist is still alive with 17 kills. He wins MVP for this engagement. But need to back off. The pillars are few, but there are enough of them to start damaging these Loyalists. A little bit of motion to keep the T1 artillery from hitting, and we're good to go. Mobile Flak going to take care of this Renegade pretty easily, I think. And Assailum. Why are you not firing? There is Percival, right there. And you are firing at the air. But you're not firing at the Percival. This is very strange. But a couple of shots from the Percival and it's going to be dead, so it doesn't really matter at this point. And holy cow, there's a Monkey Lord. Eggroll built a Monkey Lord off of Reclaim. We got Electrician sitting on 60k. And the egg roll at 75, continuing to widen the gap, despite the fact that the electrician gained ground right there. So that is a very large surprise to me, actually. I didn't look at the reclaim counters when I was uh, doing this. I assumed that red would have caught up with that. But egg roll is just doing a phenomenal job of mopping up any and all mass that he can get his mitts on. One thing to remember, this plateau up here is not accessible from the ground, and I don't think you can build on it from the edge. Um, there's enough rough terrain here 
that it doesn't let you get close enough to build a factory. Maybe able to right there. Maybe. But I'm not 100% sure. But uh, if you drop some engineers up here, there are several thousand more mass um, up on this plateau. So that's definitely something that you do not want to forget about. So at this point, the electrician is outpacing the egg rolls eco by a factor of two. Egg rolls turning out more power, but electrician is turning out 111 mass per tick to egg rolls 55. And the electrician is not scouting enough. He does have a strap bomber out, and he does have some T3 scouts out here. Let's take a look at what his map looks like. That is what his map looks like. There is not nearly enough intel gathering going on for the electrician. And the egg roll honestly is looking about the same. That's a lack of scouting from both sides. But what is going to happen here with this monkey lord is a crying shame. But it is inevitable when you're not scouting at all. Scouting is your friend. You must do it. We got a T3 air factory online for the egg roll as well. He's going to be a little bit behind in ASF production, but he does have the T3 factory. Well, I don't know. There's not really any build power on this air factory either. Oh, there goes the Omni. So sad, so sad. Percivals and Strikers and Pillars. We got all three tier levels, tech levels right here. I'm going to take out those T1 engineers and start moving towards the base. It's going to present some minor issues. But not as major as what this is going to cause when it collides with the electrician's base. So that was a suppression play. The egg roll did not eco put all of his money into expansion, into aggression, kept electrician suppressed as long as he possibly could and did very well at the early game. The only thing I think I would have changed is maybe um, teching up a few more mass extractors early because in such an extended engagement as this map will inevitably be, because it's just big, you can't really effectively end the game quickly. Um, you're going to need that mass later on, and you can see the deficit right here. Were this monkey lord not walking across the water right here, the egg roll would probably lose this one. His reclaim advantage was monstrous, but it is no longer so. He's only got 4k advantage over the electrician because of all of the territory given up right uh, in those two areas. So... Electrician's catching up on Reclaim, he's got the higher tech level with his mexes, he's got way more mass income, and this is the point where the game would flip and he would start steamrolling the egg roll, but the egg roll has other plans. There is absolutely nothing in this base that can stop a monkey lord, and there is a monkey lord on the way. Thankfully there's a transport, the electrician won't be... Um, completely vulnerable here but he may get sniped off if there are are there still no ASF from blue one scout that's the only t3 air unit that I see but here comes the monkey lord just barely poking its head out of the water there, landing a couple shots on the Percival red needs to go investigate that because the electrician has no idea what's happening here soon as that laser comes on he will know for sure though I think the egg roll has no intel. He does not. He did have the T3 scout over. There's the laser. Let's see what electrician does. There's a monkey lord on the way, my good sir. You need to make up your mind and make it up quickly. Cannot be hanging around here. He is going for the transport. Monkey lord is going to pull in. As long as you can kill off all the T3 power, that would pretty much end this game. We actually got strat defense going down. That is a very expensive tool if you don't know that you need it or not. Because there's not enough scouting to know. We actually got Soul Ripper nearly finished too. Holy cow, Eggroll. Pulling all of this mass out of nowhere. That is actually impressive. Very impressive. 
pulling two T4s out, the electrician is just completely and totally unprepared for it. Gonna lose his T3 air factory. No more strap bombers for you. And start mopping up engineers for that tasty, oh so tasty veterancy. The eco advantage is going to be no more in just a second here. Got T1 interceptors headed across. Monkey Lord denting an exterior panel and scratching the paint on that T3 bomber. Anti-air is definitely not the greatest on the Monkey Lord, but it does exist. It can knock down a Mercy or two, and it does shoot down engineering drones, so that can be a good thing. Eventually, I don't know. I think the Monkey Lord would actually kill the Strap Bomber before the Strap Bomber killed the Monkey Lord. One Strap Bomber, anyway. Not that that does you a whole lot of good, but it does exist. T3 power generators going down. Excellent targeting on that. Soul Ripper is just about to come online. And Star Lifter's headed across here. This is just a ridicu ridiculous game. Voice break it again. The, uh, the tenacity of this T4 build. This should not have worked against a scouting opponent, but when you combine that super hard early aggression with um, the lack of scouting from the electrician, this is the game that you end up with. This is basically what I wanted. I wanted an example of a game, and this is serving the purpose quite nicely, I feel. Two strap bombers now hammering away at that monkey lord, but alas, I don't think that it will succeed. Alright, so Ripper's done. Use it. Electricians drop down. He has building T2 power. He has a whopping 20 power income. He has been knocked down to square one as far as Eco is concerned. And oddly enough, that actually happened last game I cast. No, it was a couple of games ago. That Twin Rivers game I casted where both people were at one mass 20 power at the end of the game. He has seen the Soul Ripper. And he is going to control K, quitting out, handing the win over to the egg roll, thanks to that Soul Ripper. Well, guys, that is going to be the end of that game. Um, like I said, I tried to get a little bit of a shorter one because of the voice issues, but that is a showcase for what you should and should not do, and hopefully it'll help you guys out when you're trying to play one versus one on a little bit larger map. Things that were done right, the egg roll with his very extremely aggressive early build, although I would have backed off of that a little bit to get my power situation a little better, so that is something that could be improved. And also the electrician had a solid approach, teching up his mechs early getting high tier units onto the field and going for late game control because that's what UEF excels at. But bad things that were done, the aforementioned power stalling and the complete and total lack of scouting from both sides until very late in the game. That is never something that you should be doing and that leads to death as we just saw. So takeaways from this game, be more aggressive, scout more aggressively. And if we can all learn that, I think all of us will be much better players. Alrighty, guys, that is going to wrap up this cast and this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I will be back with you guys on Saturday when we'll be doing the live cast. Do not forget it. 6 p.m. Eastern United States time. We've done the last time was the third one that we did. <clears throat> and uh, it went really well. Had about 60 people watching it. So numbers are going up and we all had a great time. We casted, I casted one game live. We had a question and answer time and then um, did a, I played a game with you guys at the end of that cast and all that went really well. We had lots of fun. So hopefully you guys can join us for that again, 6 p.m. Eastern United States time. And I am going to sign out of here before my voice gives out completely. You guys all have a great day. Hopefully I will see you in the next video.